It's time for our new segment, Teflon John. Much of the media has been giving John McCain what sure feels like a free ride, barely going after him for flip-flops on a host of issues from torture and taxes to abortion and gay marriage. The press just loves his image. The maverick from Arizona, riding around on a bus called the Straight Talk Express. That's why we're calling this segment Teflon John. Tonight, the tepid response to a major McCain gaffe, the kind of mistake that would have devastated Clinton and or Obama, and we would have called either of them out on it, too. But Teflon John walks away unscathed. McCain has made gaffe after gaffe when it comes to foreign affairs. And yet the D.C. media and pundits have, for the most part, shrugged it off. Imagine the reaction if Obama had made even one of these embarrassing errors. I was in a conference in Germany over the weekend, and uh, uh, President Putin of Germany gave one of the old Cold War-style speeches uh, as he addressed the conference there. Well, it's common knowledge and has been reported in the media that, uh, the, that Al-Qaeda is going back into Iran and receiving training and are coming back into Iraq from Iran. That's, that's well known. I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, the Iranians are, are training extremists, not Al-Qaeda, not Al-Qaeda, I'm sorry. How can we bring pressure to bear on the, on the government of Somalia? How can we, uh, pardon me, Sudan, I'm sorry, Sudan. Uh. I can tell you that it is succeeding. I can look you in the eye and tell you it's succeeding. We have drawn down to pre-surge levels. The first thing I would do is make sure that we have a missile defense system in place in Czechoslovakia and Poland. Reducing supplies to Czechoslovakia. I regret some of the recent behavior that Russia has exhibited and I'll be glad to talk about that later on including reduction in oil supplies to Czechoslovakia. <laughs> on Capitol Hill McCain questioned General David Petraeus about the war once again. He mixed up the different sects of Islam, a crucial distinction since Al-Qaeda is made up of Sunni terrorists. <laughs> There are numerous threats to security in Iraq and the future of Iraq. Do you still view al-Qaeda in Iraq as a major threat? Uh, it is still a major threat, though it is uh, certainly not as major a threat as it was, say, 15 months ago. Certainly still. not an obscure sect of, uh, of the Shiites, although no. overall, no, or sir. Sunnis, or anybody else. And, uh, but, Brad, it's not just age, because back in 2000, a, uh, a great philosopher called out John McCain on the same issue. It is an amazing phenomenon, referring to Czechoslovakia, which McCain referred to Czechoslovakia in 2000. I'll tell you that. It's like the flap over the foreign leader deal. A guy gets up and quizzes me. It's my fault for trying to answer, but John McCain says something about the ambassador to Czechoslovakia. Well, I know there's no Czechoslovakia, but yet it didn't make the nightly national news. That, of course, was then Governor George W. Bush, complaining about the fact that no one was covering in 2000 the fact that McCain referred to Czechoslovakia. So put aside this Czechoslovakia issue, even George Bush was complaining in 2000. Why is it that no one seems to hold McCain accountable for these kinds of gaffes? Well, it seems yesterday may have been a turning point after John McCain said this in a speech in Ohio. By January 2013, America has welcomed home most of the servicemen and women who have sacrificed terribly so that America might be secure in her freedom. The Iraq War has been won. That's right, by 2013, the Iraq War has been won. But now that was seen by many as McCain setting a date for victory in Iraq and therefore a date for troops to return home, something he's never done. But then reporters on the, quote, Straight Talk Express challenged him on that 2013 date. This is the first time you're actually putting oh, a date no. on it. No, no, I'm not putting a date on it. I'm saying that we will, it could be next month, it could be next year, it could be three years from now, it could be, but I'm confident that we will have it. And 
I am not setting a date. And if any interpretation of my remarks uh, indicate that, it's simply false interpretation of my remarks. It's a false interpretation of my remarks. So 2013 shouldn't be seen as a seal. As a, you're not setting a date, but you're predicting it will be by 2013. How, how many times I can I say? I said by the end of my first term, we will succeed in Iraq. Today, we have succeeded in Iraq. Today, we have. The strategy has succeeded. 2008, we have succeeded. Okay? Does that mean that I'm setting a date? I don't think so. But you wouldn't say we've won. What? You wouldn't say we've won. We've, I, I would say we have succeeded. Okay? If people hear your speech today, should they come away from this believing that if you're president, that by the end of your first term, most of the troops will be home? That that's the promise you're making, is that you hope that your, your, your expectation and promise to American people is that victory will I'll be won to, and therefore... I'll try to repeat again exactly what I just said. And I'll well, repeat it over and over again. I'll be glad to do that. Okay. I believe that the surge is succeeding. I believe that victory is is coming about. I believe that if we set a date for withdrawal, then it will lead to defeat. Are you also saying that it's possible that the I'm saying what I said in the speech. I'm saying what I said in the speech. Are you saying that this is the goal, but it's also you're not making a promise that they'll come home? If the war isn't won by 2013, the troops will I'm still be I'm promising there. that we will succeed in Iraq. Okay. But I, I'm not still clear on what that means. We're back. It sure feels like the mainstream media is giving John McCain a pass for the comments we uncovered last week where McCain says he didn't always love his country. What does that do to a person to spend that much time in solitary confinement? I think it makes you a better person, obviously. It makes you love America. I really didn't love America until I was deprived of her company. But probably the most important thing about it, Sean, is that I was privileged to have the opportunity to serve in the company of heroes. I was born into America's service. It wasn't until I was deprived of her company that I fell in love with America. I've said repeatedly, I think those comments were eloquent and inspiring. But why, given the media's obsession with Michelle Obama's comment about pride in America, are McCain's remarks that much different? For the first time in my adult life, I am proud of my country because it feels like hope is finally making a comeback. And the media's been blasting Obama for months over that, particularly the right-wing media, yet they've ignored a similar remark John McCain made at a virtual town hall just over a week ago. The question is from a gentleman who was educated both at Princeton and at Harvard, and the simple question was, how can he be proud of his country? Uh, I'll admit to you that it's tough, that it's tough in some respects. Why are we the only ones covering this? Is the media too enamored with John McCain? Hillary Clinton has slammed Obama over not holding subcommittee hearings in the Senate while he's campaigning for president. Forget about holding hearings. What about not even showing up? John McCain has been absent for over half the votes in the Senate since January of last year. That's more than any other senator except for Senator Tim Johnson from South Dakota who was recovering last year from a brain hemorrhage. Hillary Clinton has been absent 27% of the time, Barack Obama 37. McCain has missed 56% of Senate votes since January of last year. McCain has missed votes on everything from consumer product safety to the economy to defense to aid for injured vets. And yet the media just seem to let it pass as they obsess only over Obama and Clinton. Won't. Tonight with the economy now the top issue, it's amazing how few people are talking about McCain's latest flops on this issue. In February, McCain opposed any new taxes. So on taxes, are you a read, read my lips candidate? No new taxes, no matter what. No new taxes. All right. But then a couple of weeks later, he said, quote, I'm not making a read my lips statement that I will not raise taxes, but I'm not saying I can envision a scenario where I would. OK, but I'm not making it a centerpiece of my campaign. OK, then yesterday, a new new tax statement saying, quote, I'll wait forever to increase Americans taxes because I don't think that's beneficial to our economy. So where is John McCain on this issue? I don't know. But I do know that if Obama or Clinton flip-flopped like this, the media would be all over them. It seems not for Teflon John. Welcome back today. John McCain gave a major speech on Iraq. McCain painted a relatively rosy picture of the future. The dramatic reduction in violence has opened the way for a return to something approaching normal political and economic life for the average Iraqi. 
All right, but the problem, a total of 923 civilians were killed in March, a 31% increase from February and the deadliest month since August of 2007. We know that the, the, the President Bush was a C student at Yale. <laughs> so did, do you remember your GPA at school? My, my GPA earned me fifth from the bottom of my class at the Naval Academy status. So I ca the, the GPA was, get, based, since that was the, uh, in the Coolidge administration, they did gain, they, uh, it was a different, a different measurement, but I can assure you, <laughs> on, to on today's standards, it would be barely passing. Uh, Senator, uh, on computers, are you a Mac guy or a PC guy? Neither. I am, I am a uh, illiterate that has to rely on my wife for all of the assistance that I can get. I can barely get the news clips that uh, have my name on them. 